Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. You know, over a million people started businesses in 2023, which I think is pretty amazing. And if you are one of them, congratulations. It's a huge step to enter the world of entrepreneurship. If you've been in business for longer than a year, congratulations again, because 20% of businesses fail within the first year. That's a staggering statistic. One in five small businesses will fail in their first year. Even more profound is that 40% of businesses will fail within three years of opening the doors or launching. I don't want you to fall into to that statistic. So whether you've been in business for one year, three years, five years, 10 years, it doesn't matter. My mission is to help you so that you can create the success that you desire. We can define success any way we want to. You get to define success for you. I get to define success for me. But what we're going to talk to do about today is what does a business need to succeed? And I'm going to tell you that the very first thing that it needs is a solid foundation. And we're going to dive into that today. But before we dive in to the actual meat and potatoes of the episode today, I want to share a couple things with you. At the end of this episode, I'm going to be telling you about a new opportunity to work with me. And I want to also share with you that very soon we are going to be unveiling our new offerings. And I cannot tell you how happy I am about these because I'm making business coaching from the Christian perspective more accessible. And I want to ensure you that as we move through this episode, pay attention to the areas that you may not have implemented already or that you are struggling with or that you didn't know about. It's going to be good to grab a pen and paper today because there's going to be so many details. If you're walking the dog or you're driving in the car, no worries because the show notes over on the blog have a plethora of information, tons of links that you can click to go to additional blog posts for more information or to access the previous blog post as well. So if you're ready to dive in, so am I. So what does a business need to succeed? Of course, there are many facets to a successful business, but the core components that you need include, first and foremost, clarity. You can't build a foundation for your business if you don't have clarity. And what do you need clarity on? Well, you need clarity clarity on what you do, who you serve, aka those soulmate clients that are going to want to hire you, how you serve and do what it is that you do, why you do what you do, what differentiates you as the one to work with. And you have to have a positive mindset. That's crucial for discovering clarity because if you don't have a positive mindset, what happens? You feel confused, you feel doubtful, you feel feel fearful. And when you have any of those emotions, you're not going to have clarity on what makes you stand out as the expert that you truly are. Okay, the second thing you need is a website. I know you've probably heard people say, nope, you can start your business on Facebook. I'm not going to argue with that. Sure, you can do that. But if you want sustainable success and if you want to look like the person that people should hire, then you need a website. Facebook could go down, it could disappear, your account could be hacked. So many things could happen that if you're banking on Facebook being your foundation for your business, you're going to lose out in the long run because somebody else in your area of expertise and your niche has already built a website and looks very professional. They are going to stand out as the one to hire. So on your website, some of those key things, you want to have it so that it is a place where people can come and find out more about you. They can learn more about you. 
They can learn to know you, love you, and trust you. Your website should explain your offers, your products and services. It should provide clarity through the messaging, through the copy on what you do, how you do it, who you serve, why you serve those people, and why you do what you do. The foundation of your business and the cornerstone of your content and messaging is your website. So if you think of your foundation, first and foremost, clarity. Second, that clarity is an, is used to build your website, to craft that copy, the messaging that's going to resonate with your soulmate person. And you have to have clarity around that soulmate person because on your website, you're going to be talking directly to them. You're going to be speaking to the pain points that they have that you can help them solve. And on your website also, you want to have to show how people can become a part of your community. Think about your email list and how they can contact you. So those are just some of the facets of your website. Your personal brand ties into clarity and it ties into your website. You need to control the perception that other people have of you, what they think, say, and feel about you. You must differentiate yourself. And that is what personal branding is. So your personal brand strategy is all about making yourself stand out as the go-to in your niche. What makes you unique? What, what experiences, education have you had? What have you learned or what expertise have you garnered from working with past clients? What makes you stand out? in your niche and why should people hire you? This is so incredibly important for connecting emotionally with your soulmate client. And I know I've talked about the soulmate client before, but when I'm talking about your soulmate client, yes, it is your ideal client. It is not an avatar. It is a human being. And it is that person that you are going to feel completely fulfilled when working with. And it is that person that maybe they're just a bit behind you and you can relate to them so well that you're going to connect with them on a really deep level. Maybe it is just the person who is experiencing pain points that you have the expertise to solve, but you know specifically what they're thinking, feeling, experiencing, what they want, need, and desire. And all of this clarity around that helps you communicate your unique differences that specifically apply to them, to those soulmate people. If you think of it, they're like, you know, you think of a soulmate for life, think of your soulmate client similarly. They are truly the people that you know with all your heart you want to work with and the God's leading you to help and serve. All right, next up, and again, clarity circles all the way around to, to this too, your business plan. You have to have clarity around your goals. And of course, I'll link a show, I'll link in the show notes at a link to an episode on goal setting. But some of those goals may be financial. They may be based on a number of clients. They may be based on a number of products or offers. Your goals are going to be very specific to you and your business, and they are going to start with clarity around what you want to achieve and who you want to achieve that for. Your goals or your business plan, I should say, also are going to include how you intend to achieve them. You have to have a plan of action. You have to have strategies in place. What is that going to look like within your business plan? In your business plan, you should consider a team, whether you have one now or whether you want to add that to your business plan for a certain time frame coming up, hopefully sooner than later, because trust me, when you have a team, you are going to be able to focus on all of the things that are going to generate revenue and income and clients, and your team can do all of those things that are not in your wheelhouse, not your expertise, or that you really do not enjoy doing. You need a mission statement. And you also, within your business plan, should consider consider a ministry component or 
allegiances to organizations that you want to support so that you can tithe when you meet your financial goals or, well, even before you meet your financial goals. But ministry should be a component within your business plan if you're a Christian entrepreneur and you want to have that as a component in your business. It's not that you have to, but if that is part of who you are and you are a service provider, you are following a purpose and calling, and you really feel strongly about that, then it may be that part of your business would be in the ministry area. All right. Offers and pricing is next on the list. So when I say you have to have clarity, I mean it. And this is one of those things where clarity really comes into play. Your soulmate clients, pain points, needs, desires, wants, they have to be at the forefront of your offers and your pricing. What result do your soulmate clients want more than the money that's in their pocketbook? Your offers should be differentiated by quality and, again, the service or product that you offer. Also, with your offer, how do you work with your soulmate clients? In person, virtual, locally? Do you have a storefront or do you do business worldwide? If you have a product, do you ship? What does that look like? And your offers should, you should consider and have complete clarity around affordability, value. Your price differentiates you just like your quality and your location differentiate you in your business. Think of the long-term value of your offer. Don't trade your time for dollars or your time for money, think about the value that your soulmate clients will get long-term when they work with you. All right, processes and automation. What does your onboarding and offboarding look like? Content creation and scheduling. That's another thing that you can automate, that you can plan ahead for, and you should do so so that you have evergreen, cornerstone content that you can then share on other platforms. Your calendar automation. What calendar program are you using and is it automated? Can people easily access you and then get reminders or details about the any information that they might need to give them peace of mind as they're connecting with you or learning more about you or connecting, contacting you? A good CRM, this is like a customer um, client management system, client record management system, is crucial for automation and for you to be able to streamline and simplify your business. It helps with good customer service, and it also is going to help you with client retention and referrals because good customer service equates to people being happy with you, your service, your business, and everything that you do for them. If you're looking for a good CRM, one of the things that I am an affiliate for is Click Automations. It is the system that I use. Every single thing in my business is under one umbrella, which immensely simplifies because I don't have to use Zapier, Zapier, or Zapier, however you say it, to connect things. Every single thing from contracts, onboarding, invoicing, social media scheduling, email marketing, trying to, my memberships, my, or courses, um, trying to think what else, my offers, every single thing is on that one platform. So it makes my life so incredibly simple and even better. They have a great team that helps me so that I don't have to do it myself and I don't have to feel stressed or afraid that it's not going to work properly. All right. The seventh thing we're going to mention today is brand marketing strategy. The foundation of your business has to have a brand marketing strategy associated with it. But these other things that I've mentioned have to come first because without clarity around your personal brand, without a website, without clarity around your products and offers, without automation and onboarding, offboarding processes in place, why would you market your business? Because you're not ready for clients to come in. You're not ready to serve them fully. So your brand marketing strategy should consist of email marketing, 
do you have a lead magnet? If you don't have a lead magnet, it's time to create one and develop an email nurture sequence around that. You need to also have regular touch points with your email list. That keeps you front of mind so that even if someone on your list isn't ready to hire you, they're constantly being reminded that you're there. And they just may have a conversation with someone who would be a perfect fit for you and mention you, and therefore you just got a referral. Blogging, SEO optimized blogs, key. That becomes your cornerstone content, your evergreen content that is on a platform you own, which is your website. From there, you can take that content and spread it wherever else you want to share it. Case studies can become blog posts. And just so you know, I am linking episodes on all of these topics in the show notes. So be sure and go check those out if you have questions or need additional information. YouTube is a great resource for your brand marketing strategy, not a resource. I shouldn't say resource. It is a great place for you to market your business because it is a search engine. It is second only to Google in terms of search a search engine. So it is a great way for people to find you. And we will have an upcoming episode soon on YouTube and how you can use that to market your business as well. Pinterest marketing, there's podcasting, course, one of my favorites, PR, public relations, and that includes podcast guesting, which we've had a plethora of episodes on the show about podcast guesting. And I will link one of the most recent ones in the show notes, um, getting featured on other people's blog posts in articles, magazines, um, summits, different things like that. Speaking. Speaking is a really amazing way to demonstrate your uniqueness to demonstrate your expertise and to grow your community while attracting clients. So we're going to stop there. And those seven are the key things that I believe need to be in the foundation of your business. And that is where you begin. So whether you're in business one year, seven years, it doesn't matter. All of these things should be a part of your business if you want to grow a sustainable business. Digital marketing is a crucial component of your brand marketing strategy, of your overall business strategy, right? You want to have an online presence. We live in a digital era. People are going to find you online. They're not going to the yellow pages anymore. They're not going to ads in the newspaper. They're looking for you online. So you do need to be visible, and that is digital marketing. Now, I want to emphasize that social media is not the be-all, end-all of digital marketing. You can grow your business without social media. And I know you guys have heard me say that before, but I'm going to emphasize it again. More critically, I want to emphasize that your business's foundation is not built on social media. And I mentioned that briefly before when I was talking about Facebook. All foundational components of your business are on platforms that you own, not platforms that somebody else owns and is making money off of. You need to have your business built on a foundation that you own, which would be your website. It's your, your website, email list, podcast if you have one. It's okay to be on social media. I'm never gonna tell you to be off of it completely unless you want to be off of it completely. A lot of us have kids. We need to be able to check up on them, right? A lot of us, for a lot of us, that's how we keep up to date with our families. So it's not a bad thing to be on social media, but it is not the foundation of your business. So keep that in mind. And if you don't feel comfortable or don't want to be on it for whatever reason, you don't have to be. I just want you to recognize that. All right. So my question for you is, does your business need a health check? When did you start your business? How long have you been trying to grow your business to a sustainable level of success where clients will flow in like clockwork? This is my new offer. I am now offering business health checks. If you aren't where you want to be, this is a great opportunity to have an extra set of eyes on your business. 
I will do a deep dive review of your business, complete evaluation of your online visibility, your online presence. Is your messaging clear? Does your personal brand stand out? How does your website look? Is your website performing well? All of those things will be evaluated. And after the evaluation, I will provide you with a video and a PDF of all of my recommendations and strategies that you will be able to implement as soon as possible, immediately to start seeing transformation and growth within your business so that you can ultimately achieve sustainable success and not fall into the statistics that I mentioned earlier. Before I close out, I want to share a few more statistics with you. Just a couple of quick, one, quick ones. According to Clarify Capital, the average salary for business owners, for small business owners, is $68,692. I think it's time for a raise. How about you? If you are hitting the average or are below, it's time to implement visibility strategies to attract more clients and to raise the bar on your annual income, your annual revenue. The more you make, the more you can do to serve other people or organizations in your community that are doing good for God, bringing glory to him. And this is where, I, when I mentioned before that ministry can come into play to your business plan, like where do you want to put that? The more you make, the more you can do for others. One last significant statistic that I want to share is that business owners, small business owners who have a mentor are 12% more likely to succeed in the first year of business. I think we can extrapolate that out to any year of business, but I want to emphasize that it is a good idea to have help when you need help. I don't want you to be a business that doesn't make it. People need your gifts, talents, knowledge, and skills. So get the help that you need. Because the ROI of hiring a mentor, hiring a coach, hiring a consultant is a lifetime of opportunity. It's not an investment only for the time that you're receiving the help. In the show notes, there is a link to the Business Health Check. There's also a link to the blog course, how to start and grow a blog to reach your ideal audience. So if you're interested in learning more about blogging and SEO, that's a great place to start. It's only $47. And then there is also the free ebook, Five Crucial Strategies to Start and Grow Your Business for Sustainable Success Without Social Media. So. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today. This was a, just a quick one, but with a ton of information that you can start applying to your business today. If you have questions, you know where to find me, Robin at the robingram.com. Otherwise, head over to the show notes because all of your questions will be answered there. I'll see you next time.